I'm going to go through a few things. Should be. Nope. Test, test. Is that loud enough in the back? No. Awesome. Thanks, Hunter. So uh, before I get into the value moment, um, I want to let you know that we have quite a few things planned out for the rest of the year for team meetings, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure that you're here um, and bring a friend. Uh, and, and we're going to have some activities going on the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you're, you're here on time and, uh, and that you're bringing people with you. Um, but Friendsgiving next week will be fun. And then first part of uh, December, we've got some awesome things planned that we're going to announce next week. So we'll let you guys know about those. Um, so I'm going to play a video. And uh, this is an exciting announcement. And uh, I'm curious... Who's registered for family reunion so far? Raise your hand. Actually, stand up really quick. I want to see who's registered for family reunion. Okay, good crew. If your name, how many of you, uh, you can sit down. If you have not written your name on the board on the uh, second story, go ahead and make sure that you write your name. So as soon as you go up the stairs, you'll see this family reunion uh, board that we have, and you can put your name on it. Um, so make sure that you do that. Uh, we just had an announcement yesterday of another guest speaker that is going to be coming. So we're going to roll this video, and then we'll uh, have a little conversation. So it is the last day to register for the early bird pricing. So I'd highly encourage keeping it on there. I'll go to that video, that next one in a sec, Hunter, thank you. Uh, I highly encourage to jump on that. Um, last year, once they announced the final guest speaker, they actually jumped it up to $1,300. Uh, so I don't know what pricing they're going up to right now, but um, it's still $799. So uh, $800, bucks. highly encouraged to take advantage of that as well as book your hotel. Uh, I know the Mandalay Bay, that's where the event is being hosted, but they've already booked out hotel rooms there. Um, and uh, there's a planning on somewhere between 12 to 14,000 people in attendance. So it's gonna be massive. There's a Marriott hotel right across the street. That's the one we would recommend to next. And uh, they do shuttles right across to the Mandalay Bay. So that's gonna be convenient. Um, and typically what tends to happen is, well, most people there's, uh, have already uh, booked at the Mandalay Bay, but again, the Marriott would be the next best recommendation. Cool? So I'm super stoked about this. This is actually uh, really quick. This was me negotiating with Tony Robbins a, a month ago <laughs> to try to get him to come to family reunion, and so I'm glad that he took the offer. Right? So uh, this is funny story. This, this uh, image on the left-hand side is actually uh, one of my first Tony Robbins events. This is back in 2017. And uh, this was in New Jersey. And <clears throat> before that time, I had listened to a lot of his content just uh, on, on YouTube, uh, different audio uh, uh, books that he has. And what I'm going to share with you today, if nothing more, what I would, would uh, commit to is saying that 2024 could be your best year yet, despite what's happening in the market. Okay. How many people have seen some fear-driven news headlines in the past couple of days? Okay, the past week. Uh, the reality is that there's a lot of fear in the marketplace, not just in real estate, but business, industry-wide, our economy. There's a lot of things that are happening right now. And uh, one of the things that I want to, to do is, is share with you some principles uh, that I've taken from Tony Robbins over the years that have massively uh, impacted my life. I, I would say that after this uh, first event that I went to, I can pinpoint and look back at my trajectory and look at my income, look at all the different targets and goals that I had set, just a completely different uh, level of success that I was able to obtain by some of the principles that you shared. And so I'm going to share a few of those today. Um, but I highly encourage you to put Family Reunion on your target list for 2024. That is going to be one of the deciding factors on really your mindset, your outlook, your perspective 
uh, not only is, is Gary Keller going to go into the economy and what's happening and what he's projecting to happen in the future, uh, but also you're able to network and connect with other top leaders uh, and real estate agents across the country. So highly encourage you to come to that. Uh, I'm going to play this little video a little bit more in depth about uh, uh, Tony Robbins, just two minutes, and then we'll get into some of these principles that uh, you can start installing into your business and start thinking about how they might impact your, your goals and your, your results in 2024. The secret to living is giving. Because you're never going to be happy by what you get. You get it, you're excited for well for how long. But if you keep giving, you'll become something you need. That whether other people know it or not, you will know who you are. People take away all your things they can't take away who you become as a man or as a woman, as a soul. So business is a spiritual game. How can I do more for others than anybody else? How can I be consistent? How can I look better? How can I fall in love? clients and give over the level of love as I can't even imagine. I develop this beautiful relationship with such joy. It isn't a transaction. There are transactions involved, but you're not doing it for the transaction. You're doing it to make that difference in their business or their life. When you're driven by a mission more than yourself, you get a level of energy that people just try to take for themselves and never have. So my heartfelt wish for you, my dear friends, is remember what business is. It's a spiritual game. It's about what can you give, not what you can get. You'll get plenty, and you'll give much more than you expect to see. You do that, you'll have more than money. You have a life of incredible meaning. Your life will be blessed. So 2024, what I would invite for who was in business boot camp? Uh, this fourth quarter. Okay. So some of the principles that we talked about in, in business bootcamp is how important it is to deliver value to our clients and realize that we are in a relationship building business, right? And you've seen people who act very transactional in our industry. And then those who really focus on building deep, meaningful connections and relationships. I was actually listening to a podcast, uh, by Robert uh, Rufkin, what's that his name? Um, and he shared some interesting perspective. He said that we're actually moving, or he feels that we've moved from a connection-based world to a very technology-based world where we actually don't, we communicate, but we don't connect. Really interesting. I want you to think about this. He says that we tend to communicate, but we don't actually connect. And maybe that is why 90% of buyers and sellers who are surveyed said that they would use their real estate agent or real estate professional again. Does anybody know how many, what percentage actually do? It's about 13%. 90% said, yeah, I'd use Trent again. Right? Yeah, I'd use Scott or Rennell again. 13% actually do. Where's the disconnect? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny. I think that part of it comes down to, uh, as agents, we tend to think that we're actually connecting through our communication, but we're not. <laughs> like that text message or that email that you sent, did it actually build that relationship? Right. And so start thinking strategically around what actual activities, what am I going to do in 2024 that's actually going to build better relationships with my clients? increase the trust, increase the like factor so that they won't use anybody else. So they will actually reuse my services, okay? It's much easier to build a repeat and referral business, but unfortunately, just because of the um, fast-paced environment that we're in, too often agents get stuck in just trying to find new business. If they just service their clients and continue to, to provide value at a high level, you'll get all the business that you need and want, really. So these 10 principles that we're going to go through, uh, what, I, what I am confident in is that they can transform your results in your life in 2024. So we're going to go through these one by one. So number one is it's not about the goal. It's about growing into the person who can accomplish that goal. This is a, a one that Jim Rohn also talks about. Is uh, He said to set the target and f- you fill this number with whatever your target is, okay? Whatever your, your metric is. But he says... 
set a goal to, to become a millionaire, not for the money, but for who it would require you to become in the pursuit. So think about whatever your number is. If your goal is 50,000, if it's 250,000, if it's half a million, if it's a million dollars next year, whatever the target is, the questions should start uh, running in your mind of what would I need to do? Who would I need to become? What skills might I need to develop? What habits, what new routines, what new rituals would I have to create in order to become a person worth X amount? Okay. So if you look at the income that you've made over the last three to five years, most what's most realistic is that a lot of that result is because of who you are today. Would you agree with that? So the question then is, well, what do I need to shift in 2024? Who do I need to, to become and what do I need to grow into for that next target that I am chasing? Okay. Especially since we're in this season of, of goal setting, how many of you have your goals written down, ready to go for 2024? Okay, everybody with your hands down should be in my class on Friday, okay? Because we're going to define that. But the reality is when you, when you look at a target, whatever it might be, the question should always come back down to, well, who? Who do I need to be to earn that reward, okay? Number two is people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Now, this is Novalee's crush. Does anybody know who says this? Simon Sinek. Okay. <laughs> You should see the poster she has of him on her bedroom wall. Randy doesn't like it. But. So Simon Sinek, he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. He has a great book called Start With Why. You can actually just go watch the TED Talk, uh, Start With Why. It's only about 20 minutes long. But he dives into the reality of why people create success in life is typically because people actually align with people who have a powerful meaning behind what they're doing, right? That's why uh, typically if you actually, who's actually negotiated with an agent who uh, is just not the best agent? Let's just put it that way for easy terms, right? And then vice versa, who's, who's done business with other agents who are just phenomenal and you're like, man, I would love to do more transactions with this person. <laughs> Thank you, Colby. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is you don't even have to know like what's important to that person you can actually tell by how they interact with the world right or how they do business uh all their their the ways that they show up in business actually stem from why they're doing what they're doing if they're just doing it for a check they're just doing it for another dollar you actually can tell that right it's, it's not uh, something we consciously think about but you can energetically feel that from another person right so also think about that. Uh, Kobe put, pointed out something important is think about yourself. How do you do business? Is your why actually strong enough? And, uh, and, and what are you doing consistently to cultivate that or clarify what's important to you in the future? Number three is the quality of your life is based on the quality of your relationships. Quality of your life is based on the quality of your relationships. Uh, for any of those who came to our retreat um, recently, we talked about how oftentimes people will set health goals, they'll set business goals, they might set some financial goals, and oftentimes they will neglect or forget about their relationship goals. Right? So getting intentional behind what do I want to have happen with my relationship with my family, with my spouse, my partner, and also my friends, my mentors, like, what do I want those relationships to evolve into over the next 12 months? When you start asking that question, you get a little bit more intentional about how you approach those relationships, right? Um, thinking about, well, if I want to, oftentimes, one of the ways I think about this is start actually creating a top 10 list for some of those who are in our goal setting retreat. We went through this process together is who are the top 10 relationships in my life right now? And part of it is people who are currently active and you're connecting with them consistently. But then you might have to say, well, actually, who do I want to be in that top 10 that I might have been disconnected from or we're not yet connected, right? It's somebody that I admire and I want to build a relationship with. Or maybe it's a friend that you've lost touch with. 
So actually getting clear about who's your top 10, who are those people that you're going to build and develop your relationship with. And you can do something similar with your clients as well, right? So you can focus on having a top 25 or a top 50 or top 100, whatever it is, where you're going to pour intentionally a different uh, type of energy into those relationships than you might everybody else, right? So getting very focal around what's important to you in your relationships. The secret to wealth is simple. And I'll say the secret to wealth and success is simple. Find a way to do more for others than anyone else, anyone else does. Okay? If you did no other principle in your business in 2024 other than this one here, this would radically change the results you earn in your business. I promise you. How can you deliver more value than any other real estate professional to your clients? Period. What does that actually look like? This is going to cause you to go above and beyond of what is expected. Okay, we've talked about this. Meeting people's expectations is nothing special. And so your clients already expect you to negotiate for them. They already expect you to show homes. They already expect you to, uh, you know, do all of your marketing when it comes to listing their home. That's an expectation. It's nothing special. So what are you doing above and beyond where they say, there's no doubt in my mind, this is a different type of real estate professional that I'm working with compared to our last agent. And for that reason, I'll never choose another agent again if they continue to show up this way, right? So start thinking about what experiences do you have to enhance in your client experience for 2024 to continue to build uh, those relationships with your clients, but find, ways to do, find a way to do more for others than anyone else. This is a great one. Most people, overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Okay. There's a quote that says, the great tragedy of life is not that people aim too high and miss. The great tragedy in life is that they aim too low and hit. Interesting. I had a great mentor when I was 21 years old. The way that he would say this, uh, and it's stuck with me, is he said, Shoni, I would rather aim for the moon and land in the stars than to aim for the roof and land in the trash can. Okay. So just think about this. I've, I've uh, gone through this process so many times where I'm helping people to set their goals. And too often, they don't want to set a big goal. Why? Afraid of failure. They don't want to miss it. Right. And so they set a target that is what? Achievable, comfortable, realistic, doable, right? And the challenge with that is too often they'll actually end up hitting the goal or maybe still falling short, right? And so kind of changing your psychology around your goal setting process and saying, I'm going to set goals consistently that cause me to stretch, that always seem right out of reach. And I know that it's going to force me to do things a little bit differently, right? I'm going to approach uh, the way that I attack my business in a different manner. And so start thinking about, well, what goal in 2024 would actually stretch you? And for those of you who have set goals, I encourage you to go inspect it and, and, and say, well, will this actually force me to do something different than I've done this year? Or am I just trying to do what's comfortable? Right? I had a, a good friend. <laughs> uh, he's actually my best friend from high school. And we went out to uh, Dallas, Texas, our first year for uh, selling door to door. And our uh, he would always <laughs> he would always rub it in my face that he beat me by one deal that summer, right? So he would use that. We would do double dates. This was before I married, but we'd do double dates, and he'd brag that he was a better salesman than I was, right? And uh, it was funny because the the next year uh, he had set a goal at $60,000 to earn $60,000, and I'd set my goal at $100,000. Now, he actually earned $65,000. I earned $89,000. I missed my goal. Okay? And I don't want to compare myself against him. That's not the, the moral of the story, but who was more successful, even though I did not hit my goal? Right? So I just want you to think about that if you're comparing this against yourself. 
is if you set your 65,000 target and hit it versus if you set 100 grand and missed it and hit an 85,000, which one could you at the end of the day feel better about? And that comes down to this principle. This is not on the slides, but it's the, you wanna be uh, attached to the outcome, committed to the outcome, but unattached to the timeline when you're setting goals. Okay. So what that does is it, it changes your perspective. For me, if I don't hit a specific target that year, that's cool. Let's double down and let's go back at it again. Or maybe I am increasing my goal. Uh, Grant Cardone, he says it another way. He says that most people, when they're not on track to meet their goal, what do they change? What do they adjust? They adjust their goal down, right? He said, don't adjust the goal, adjust the action steps. Adjust the approach. Okay. Now, I, I, just be aware, I'm speaking about all this within reason, right? So I'm not saying, like, you're making a million dollars now and you're, your next target is, I'm a, I'm a billionaire next year. Right? It's a pretty big gap. Okay. So you've still got to set the goals intelligently, but stretch yourself. Cause, make sure that you're setting targets that are causing you to become better. And then also this time timeline. Again, uh, most people do overestimate what they can do in a year. And they don't realize what happens with this compounding effect. We, we know uh, Einstein says that uh, compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world, right? Compounding commitment, I would say, is probably in line with that. Is as much of an important factor in people's success is their commitment to stay committed to something over an extended period of time. Because most people, if we're not on track with a goal in a month or a week or a year, let's just change the goal. Okay. But staying committed to the outcome. Next one. You can't manage time, but you can manage your priorities. What book comes to mind when you see this? The one thing. You haven't read it yet. And by the way, uh, for those who haven't come to Family Reunion before, um, J. Papazan is, is a huge value to that experience, and, and he's one of the authors of that book. And so you uh, get to have some perspective from him, him as well. But this is one of the keys, is how great you are at just prioritizing different items. We all have a to-do list. There's very few people who actually have a separate success list, saying, this is what's going to cause my success. The to-do items, they have to get done. But the reality is they don't actually create the result. They're not actually income-producing activities typically. And so what I've seen is successful individuals have a success list and a to-do list that are separate. So they prioritize things. They realize that not all priorities are created equal. Okay. The next one is the path to success is to take massive and determined action. Determined is the key word here is that if you're not strategic about the approach, right? Let's just say that we're gonna all go and watch and, and chase the sun, okay? If we all run east, trying to see the sun come up, how many of us are gonna catch it? Now, what if we're running in the west, trying to watch the sun come up? Okay, so the direction does matter. Right, we've got to be headed in the right direction. And so part of that goal setting process, especially this Wednesday and Friday, is going to be about orienting yourself in the right direction. Okay. Saying, well, if I want to see the sun come up, and I know we're in Utah where we've got mountains that kind of block that a little bit, right? But if I want to see the sun come up, I'm going to make sure that I'm running in the right direction. I'm running east. I'm not running the opposite way where the sun's going to come up behind me. Okay. And so the priorities or determined action is getting very clear about what actions are actually going to cause the result that I want. Okay. Being purposeful in your approach. This next one, your income right now is a result of your standards. It is not the industry. It is not the economy. It's not the president. It's not how many homes are on the market. It's not our inventory issues. Okay. Uh, there are agents in our market that will sell 40, 50, 60 homes, 300 homes this year. So we know it's not the market, right? All of our results tend to come from the standards that we have for ourselves. 
So if you want to increase the result in 2024, you actually have to focus on increasing your standards. Okay, that's the lead measure. Successful people spend 5% of their time on the problem and 95% of their time on the solution. What's funny is uh, if you actually just pay attention in, in your conversations with people, you'll tell if they're an in individual that focuses on the problems or the solutions. And based off of that, you can probably predict pretty closely with how much money they're making as a result. Okay? I didn't make this rule but I've been aware of it and I've seen it. And the reality is that people who are successful tend to focus more on the solutions than they do the problems. Because we've all got problems. Would you guys agree with that? Okay. And the question is, well, what are you doing to cause the result you want regardless of the problems? Okay. And this is another... Uh, and all these are different principles that Tony has either said directly, direct quotes or, or uh, kind of ideas that he sparked for me. But this one is probably the most important, uh, which he says that life happens for you, not to you. Okay. So uh, we can take the role of a victim in the real estate space, right? When you're running your own business, it's easy to do that. To say, well, there's just not, not enough inventory on the market. Uh, just, you know, buyers just feel like interest rates are too high, so nobody's going to buy, right? And you can look at every challenge with this perspective that, uh, and I can't recall, Hunter, help me if you remember this. I, I know we recently talked about this as a team, but that every challenge brings with it an equal room for opportunity, right? I think it was Brett Tanner that, that mentioned it. So as we look at some of the changes that are most likely coming into our space, right, with technology, with uh, uh, you know, legislation and different changes that are going to impact the real estate market. Here's the thing. We don't, this is not about being fear-based. We're not talking about that. We're, we're, this is, uh, uh, Gary Keller mentioned a book called Only the Paranoid Survive, which is you've got to get real with what's happening. You can't avoid the truth of what's happening. But you can be confident in saying, well, I'm going to navigate this. Like, changes happen, right? Seasons come and go. That's totally fine. So I will make a shift. I will adapt, uh, which we wrote a book on that called Shift. I'd highly recommend. Um, but you still can't just ignore what's taking place. So just know technology will impact how real estate is done in the next five years. It will. Whether you want to make that shift or not. Uh, we know there's some changes probably, probably happening on a national scale with our industry. Uh, we're going to have to adapt, right? It's not the end of real estate. Just be aware of that. Uh, for people who do share, who think that way, it's just that some shifts are going to happen, okay? And so just realize that we can't always see it in the moment, <laughs> uh, but down the road, typically you're going to look back and say, like, man, that happened for a reason. It definitely happened for a reason. And uh, so have that belief, that perspective that life happens for you, not to you. So uh, this is our lineup for FR 2024. It is in February. Um, you've got Mark King, Tony Robbins, Gary Keller, Mel Robbins, and Jay Papazon, which uh, Mel and Tony, funny enough, they're not like, they're not together, just so you know. They're not related in any way. Uh, but we've, we do got both Robbins coming, which is awesome. Really, the I would say probably the top uh, business uh, 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 entrepreneur and leader, and then also probably one of the most powerful women in business as well, and, and great, uh, uh, f phenomenal speaker. So this is going to be a huge uh, uh, resource for your business in 2024. Um, and down here we, we put, this event will help you to determine your own success in 2024. It's going to help you close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And so make that a top priority for your growth plan. Again, going back to that one question I asked is, who do you need to become to hit your goal in 2024? Most of you have to have new skill sets, new thoughts, new habits, new routines, new rituals. And this uh, uh, beginning at the beginning of the year can be a really good catalyst for that. So please mark it on your calendar and be there. We'll have about 100 people from this office that are going. So it's going to be also just a fun, collaborative uh, environment for us to be able to connect and go learn together. 
Cool. You guys catch all this? All right, we just upped it to 200. We just stretched our goal. So it is it is close. It's in Vegas, so. Uh, Her podcast. Yeah. She's like such a good speaker. Like, a lot of Audible is like where I recommend her because she's a really good seller. And she's a very, very good speaker. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Well, let's get uh, two to three ahas or takeaways from today, and then we'll jump into lunch, which Jake cooked for us and made. <laughs> Knowledge is power, and when uh, I think can't think of a time in history where having knowledge and um, being in front of Jerry would be more important than ever. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, have to take advantage of that opportunity um, to do that. Mm. Yeah. So the. My favorite family reunion that I've ever been to was at the Vegas one. The Vegas one is so much fun because so many agents can actually attend without actually having to fly. It's basically paying for it. It's going to be pretty easy to get down there, right? Um, so you're paying for the ticket, but it should be a really, really, really good event where the entire team or office will come um, and you'll be able to like, kind of get to know everybody. It's a, it's, I'm way excited for this one. Yeah, it will sell out for sure. For sure. Yeah, there's a, there's this idea that proximity is power. Okay, this is another thing that Tony Robbins talks about. So the what you'll find, uh, Renal, I know you were pretty new when you came to Family Reunion yeah. this year. Didn't even have my license. Didn't have your license yet. <laughs> Would you mind actually just sharing your uh, experience? Yes. So it was huge, and it was a little bit uh, like drinking from a. Uh, um, fire hydrant, but it also wasn't in the sense that you know, um, I loved that you could pick all the different classes that you felt like you wanted to, and there were more than, than I could possibly attend. But the sense of um, the vision that Keller Williams is and has is incredible, and um, to me. Ultimately, I took, I mean, I take notes. You guys probably see me. I'm always taking notes. And there's so many ideas. And as a new agent, it's like, oh, I could do that. Oh, no, I could do that. And ultimately, it came back to, but what is the number one thing? <laughs> yeah. That, you know, and that, it was just very, very powerful. I'm really looking forward to it. it to me, it was like it, um, that realization that there's always going to be that lifetime commitment mm, yeah. going. You know, yeah. I don't awesome. know if that helps. But. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, the funny thing is they're always looking to make it bigger and better. Uh, so I, I think that especially with the, they went $2 million over budget uh, for their guest speakers this year, for the, the keynote speakers. So um, they're, they're serious about this, and it's going to be a phenomenal experience. So. That's how they did it last year. They had two different days. Yeah. Yeah, because they had Molly Fletcher. They had, well, there's another person, though. Of course, Ed was the key keynote. Yeah, they'll do it over different days. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, usually they'll have them speak, and then it's kind of cool to hear Gary, you know, interview them. So that's going to be interesting to see Gary uh, up there with, with Mel and then also up there with Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So awesome. Okay. Have a great week. We'll see you on Wednesday or Friday. Enjoy lunch.